Hello and welcome back. In this installment today, we're going to be discussing the balance temperature and its relationship to the size of the building. So this exploratory analysis is related to a homework problem that was given here in a grad course at Texas A&M related to building energy management. And in this, we're going to be looking at a series of a sequence of cube shaped buildings. So I wanted to find the problem set up here quick. We're discussing a single zone building. So we're going to assume that inside this building, which is a cube, and we're going to give it some characteristic length L. Ooh, that's a bad arrow. This interior temperature has some value and it's the same temperature throughout. And we have some outdoor temperature. And we are going to assume that the ground is insulated. So we have some heat transfer to the outdoors through the four sides, walls, and the roof. And we'll assume that for the sake of this, that there are some level of some amount of windows and we have some transfer heat transfer through the roof. And if you can imagine, we have some load or some heat source inside the building. This can be any electrical equipment. So this is lights, this is computers, this is anything of this nature. And we're going to call that internal Q double prime. And this has some units of power over area. So we'll say something, something similar to watts per square foot. Now the balance temperature is defined to be this outdoor air temperature that when we are at that temperature, the heat transfer outside through the exterior walls through conduction is equivalent to the amount of heat generated within the building. So let's define that. So we have heat generated within the building and we're saying this is per unit area and we'll define it that per unit area is per floor area. So if there's many floors in this building, you have to start multiplying these things up. And we're going to find a balance temperature when this is equivalent to heat transfer out of the building. So if we assume that we're going from an, a higher internal temperature to outdoor air temperature, this is the heat flow out the building where U is a heat transfer coefficient and A would be the, and we're going to group this together as a composite conductive heat transfer value. So if this equation is true, we actually can take this out and we can re name this variable to be the balanced temperature and know that this is the temperature of the outdoors. So since this is a cube, let's, let's make an assumption about the height of each floor. So if this has many floors, we'll say that each floor is 12 and a half feet tall. And we'll give this to start, we'll give this characteristic length where it can only be in multiples of, of floors. So, uh, for our first characteristic length, we, we could start with L just being a single story building that's 12 and a half feet, or we can make it 25 feet, uh, 50 feet, etc. We can continue on like this. So let's start replacing some of these terms with a little more details for our given cube building, our sample cube building. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to still have this term here. We can break this floor area up into two parts. So per floor, if you can imagine this being here, the area of this square is simply L squared. And if we have multiple floors, if we know this height is also L and we know our, our height, our, our distance per floor, we know that the number of floors that we have so we have to multiply this by number of floors. It's simply a length divided by 12 and a half feet, if we all had this in feet. What I want to do next is break up this, this total building heat transfer coefficient into its component parts. So we have a U for the walls, 
times the area of the walls plus the U of the windows times the area of the windows. This is also the U of the roof times the area of the roof. That all is UA total. And if you can imagine, I've run out of room here, but we also are still multiplying by this TI minus T balance variable on this end. What I want to do next is look at just this red portion, but before I do that, I want to define something called the percentage of windows. Now, a lot of people will use the term window to wall ratio. I actually think that that's a bit confusing because you have to, if you really do it as a true ratio, if the ratio is one, that means that you actually have 50% windows and 50% walls. And I think that most people get this window to ratio term mixed up because they don't necessarily use it in the truest term of the ratio. So I'm actually going to use the percentage of windows as a variable and I will call this PW, percentage that the of this wall area that is windows. So if, if there's half windows here, it would be 50% or 0 0.5. So let's use this and we can start replacing these these areas with some version of our characteristic length. So if we take this U wall on A wall, we would get something that would look like U wall. Now the area of the wall will be L squared. So we start with that whole, that whole side. And what we need to multiply it is by one minus the percentage of the windows. I hope that doesn't confuse you too much. And we have four sides of that, one to one in the back and one to this side. So we have four. So this L squared, one minus the percentage that is windows times four, that is this area of the wall. You can do the same thing for the windows. If you remember that, that will be L squared times the percentage of the area that is windows multiplied by four sides. And the roof will simply be the heat transfer coefficient for the roof multiplied by L squared as well. And what you can notice is what we can do is we can pull out an L squared term from all of this. And we're going to pull that out and we're going to rewrite this whole equation now with our new substitutions. So let's do that. Let's come down just a little bit. And if I look at this, we have our internal heat gain value. We have an L cubed. We have a squared times L to the first here. And we have this divided by 12.5 feet per floor. And this is equivalent to, we have an L squared term all multiplied by U of the wall times one minus the percentage of windows times four plus, well, we have four U windows times the percentage of the wall that is windows plus the U value for the roof. And then we can't forget our temperature terms here at the end. Now what we can do is we can take this L squared term, divide it over here, and so we're left with just an L. So I have Q double prime times L over 12 and a half feet. And if you remember what this is, this, this term right here, that's just the number of floors that we have. Think about it, that's L is related to the height. And if you divide by 12 and a half, we've already said that that was our height per floor. So this is really the number of floors. So I'm going to rewrite this again as Q double prime times the number of floors. And we can divide that also by this whole portion here. So let me rewrite that. I need my pen. So that is multiplied. Uh, we can also do a little bit of, we can pull out a four here. So we can go four multiplied by U of the wall 
times 1 minus PW plus U of the windows times the percentage that is windows also plus U value for the roof and that whole thing is equal to the interior temperature minus the balance temperature. So now we're in the home street. So now we're just left for a little bit of rearranging. So if you can imagine, if we took this balance temperature and we added it to this side, and then we took this part and we subtracted it from this side, we would get something that in the end would look like T balance is equivalent to the internal temperature minus and that's an important an important thing and we'll have this big fraction u wall 1 minus pw plus u windows And now we have our final formula for our balance temperature in the form that has int the interior temperature set point, our internal load value, the number of floors, and some characteristics of the exterior construction. But what's important to know is that this parameter, as your building gets bigger, doesn't necessarily change. This watts per square foot doesn't change this temperature doesn't change but the number of floors goes up and up and up so as your building gets bigger and bigger and bigger this balance temperature keeps decreasing in a linear fashion and one way to conceptualize this is that when we look at this two sides this was a side that was related to internal heat gain and this was external heat gain and this varies volumetrically so you can think of it as the amount of heat you have from your inside the building you're going to continue to fill the volume with more and more floors so it's a volumetric activity whereas the external heat transfer portion is coming just from the surfaces and so that's related to the surface area and as your building continues to grow that surface area to volume ratio keeps decreasing so you continue to have more and more volume in comparison to the surface area with regards to heat transfer and so this balance temperature keeps going lower and lower and lower you need to have extraordinarily cold conditions in order to balance out the amount of heat generated within a building which is something that is important to realize that when you have a very large commercial building for instance you are always going to need some level of cooling now in a real building obviously the temperature is not cannot be assumed to be constant throughout this whole space and we can't think of it as just a single entity we actually have a continuum of temperature and this heat transfer is much more complex where you may need heating on the exterior of the building and cooling on the interior of a building. But for this simple analysis, this kind of gives you a general idea of the relationship that internal heat gain and external heat gain have to each other. And so this is a formula for the balance temperature. And I have a plot here that I made quick in Excel just to show this, if you would actually calculate this out. So if we have this characteristic length L and dimensions of feet, and our balance temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that when you have a single story building, that the balance temperature is actually fairly close to that interior temperature. This is, I don't know, 60 or 70. But as this characteristic length keeps growing, so this is multiples of two, so this is two stories, four stories, an eight story building, in order to balance that internal heat gain, you actually need something on the order of negative 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And for a 32-story cubic building, you would need something in negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which now gets into the unrealistic realm where our modeling assumptions really have broken down. 
And But this is an interesting analysis that this decreases linear with the size of the cubic building. And it's, but it's a good investigation into this balanced temperature and how the shape and size of the building affect it. So I've gone over my prescribed time limit. So I hope to see you in the next videos.